What is up, everybody? Today, I am joined by my good friend, designer, Josh uh, from Birch. And I don't think you need too much of an introduction because everyone watching already knows who, who you are. But I think what I'm most excited about to talk to you about today is in, I feel like, a short period of time, even though I know it's a long period of time, 10 years, um, you have built a massive business in our industry. And I'm all about building businesses. Yeah. Uh, but not just a massive business. I feel like you've created a Birch experience. So I love where, that. Where it's you've transcended just setting up flowers and you've created an element where clients are now coming in to have you as part of their event, not yeah. just the company. You know, not just the flowers, I should not say. Not just the flowers, yeah. So you, they, they need Josh and the Birch experience, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you've done that brilliantly, poignantly, and very quickly, right? And I think, and a lot of people may have taken substantially longer, you've condensed that. Um, and I think you've done an amazing job of building your platform on social media. Thank you. And you put yourself out there way more than I think a lot of other people do because you've seen the ROI. There's a massive return on investment for the time you've put into Instagram to now where clients are like, I'm going to be using Josh and my wedding is going to be on his Instagram, <laughs> and and there's no, it's a thing. It's like it that's it's like them being on Bravo. For it's, the become it's become a thing. It's become a thing. thing. Yeah, it's become a thing. So if you could just drop in, tell everyone a little bit about who you are, and then we'll get into business. Sure. Oh wow. Okay. Fine. So Birch Event Design, actually only born about five and a half years ago. Shockingly enough, um, I've been doing this as Josh for about fourteen years now. Mm. Uh, started in a little store in Borough Park, made my way out here to Brooklyn, and then. Hopefully soon in the city, yeah, um, which we're very excited about maybe, that. Yeah, maybe in the next couple of months. I hope so. Yeah. That's a plan. Maybe near you. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's social media. I think I just got in at the right time. That possibly could have been done with it, mixed with the idea of just not caring too much. Yeah. I think when I started, I was very self conscious about a lot of things, like who am I in this industry? What am I going to do? You know, being an Orthodox Jew in the industry in the secular market is kind of like an anomaly a little bit. And then on top of it, I don't know if it necessarily even exists prior to you doing it. I, I don't know. I don't I, think it does. I don't know. I just I remember going to like my first engage, for example, and I've been like, oh my god, I'm the only one wearing a keeper here. Should I wear it or should I not wear it? <laughs> and I was like, initially, I wasn't going to wear it because I was like, I don't know what it's going to do. Maybe it will. I don't know. And then like. I saw in the book that my assistant at the time put in a picture of me with my keep on. I was like, great. So now if I don't wear it, no one's going to remember me. So like I have to get in with it and it ended up being a memorable thing. Um, but in regards to just taking back to what social media has done and the condensing of building Birch, I think it came from the fact that we just put ourselves out there as us and remembering the fact that when you're dealing with the wedding, we're in the wedding industry, we're in an event industry, we're in a happy business, um, more than not, unless it's a divorce party, but that's also very happy <laughs> <laughs> for some people. So <laughs> that being said, like I think we just went out there and said, you know what, let's just do us, put ourselves out there as us, and whoever mm -hmm. takes us, takes us, and whoever doesn't, doesn't. And that sort of became part of what is now known as the Birch Experience. So mm -hmm. it's really awesome. I have an awesome team and everyone loves being on there, even though I forced them to be on Instagram. And most of the time they're like, please don't video us, please don't do not do this. And I'm just like... Why not? Who cares? So, but I, I don't want you to undersell yourself short and say it was just a matter of timing because I think a lot of people join platforms at any given time and your talent obviously rose through. And yeah, Thank you, you. you jumped on Instagram at the right time six years ago. Yeah, that's for sure. Big and, yeah. and push big on it. Um, but at the same token, I think some people say, yes, timing is everything, but timing with talent and hard work, I think is the true equation, right? So you're, you hit the market at the right time, yeah. but then you also need the talent. And then like what I like to say here is you could have talent and timing, but if you're not willing to put in hard work, um, you're not going to fucking do anything in this no. industry. And yeah. one thing I know from seeing your social and having followed you for so long, you guys have this weird thing about waking up at one thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> this, is this, this is true. This is true. So, you know, and it's a, it, people don't realize because they always see your finished products, right? Yeah. So on Instagram, we see a room and yep. it's done. We never really see the before, after, or Jury. 48 hours, you know, like, yep. so you might load it on Friday for a Sunday night event Correct. and no one slept for 37 hours until the bride walks in the room and Correct. then you're done. Um, and that is the hard work and dedication that people are missing out on. Um, and when you put that with talent in the right timing, then you have, I feel like, the successful recipe that is the Birch brand. That is 100% true. I mean, for me, I grew up with a very strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. So my dad did balloons my whole life. And he, his big thing at the time was brisses, right? Like, uh. a briss in the morning. Anyone who doesn't know what a briss is, it's basically eight days later, circumcision, Jewish thing. Mm -hmm. um, public. Public, yeah, public, <laughs> public. <late. So> public <laughs> circumcision. <laughs> no anesthesia. No putting anyone out. Um, and that would be the first, it's supposed to be done first thing in the morning. So what happened was is that if the briss was starting at 7 o'clock, 
we had to be there at 4 a.m. to blow the balloons up and put them on the tables. And ever since I was probably six or seven, my dad would be like, come with me. And he'd wake me up before school. We'd go do the job, go get breakfast, and then go to mm. school. That was like my thing. So when I started working in this industry, I realized that I can get a lot more done during the evening and night than I can during the day. Mm -hmm. Anyone who knows the industry, and I know this is a big industry, you know, podcast in a sense, yep. right? Which you really broke out, which is amazing that you can now give this platform over to people who want to hear Thank the way you. other people operate, which I think is fantastic. Um, so for me, my secret is that from 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. or let's say later, 7.30 p.m., that's like when I say the world goes to sleep a little bit, it's all about the clients. Mm. It's 100% about the clients. Then from 7.30 to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, it's about me. Mm. So then at that point, I could say, okay, I could start designing. I could start, you know, sending out emails to my entire company and that they could work on the next day. Because during the day, it's, it's complicated, yeah. right? Um, we're in a service business. Our clients come first. So the nighttime became an extension of my day and it became an extension of my life. And when we do setups, I'm a big believer, get out of everyone's way. Mm. So if we set up overnight, then when you come in the morning, either you'll see a more finished product, the bride will see a more finished product, the mother of the bride will walk in feeling more calm, the planner will come in feeling more calm, there won't be as much waiting for photographers, there won't be as much waiting for anybody, and we feel more accomplished. So dead or not, the product is there, and that's yeah. amazing for us, and we love that. But I think it just points back to like one one key point, and something I preach all the time is, you know, there's so many people who want to run successful businesses, but they're not willing to put the hours and the dedication oh my gosh, to work in. Yeah. And I, and I know your life looks fun on social media. Oh my god, it right? does. And, I, and, it and is, I have and to I'm justify sure that all the time. Yeah. Like everyone in my life is but like, the, oh, you were out for drinks, you were out for dinner, you were out at a party. Yeah, but you don't sleep. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I, no, no, I mean that though. It's like, yeah. and then you're balancing that with four children on top of it. Oh, yes. So you know, I think when you put that into perspective, people say, yes, Josh may be very social. Yeah. Yes, what you do is very fun, but at the end of the day, if you're not putting in 18 hour days, six to seven days a week, you're not where you are right now. That's, Correct. That's, that's the bottom that, line. That's the bottom line. It is the bottom line. So you have you're to put in the hours. Yeah. And then you've done a great job of staying social, which yes. is, which most people don't realize. I think there's a fine line between over sociality and being still present and relevant right. and being out there too much because you can't have a takeaway from your business. Correct. I mean, the reality is, A, we can't show everything. <clears throat> that's really one of the biggest parts. We can't show everything because there are a lot of clients that come in specifically and say, listen, I know you're a big social media guy. I don't want this on Instagram. I don't want to ever be on Instagram. Yep. I don't want my wedding or, or event to ever be on Instagram. I don't want anyone to even know we're using you to that extent until the day of the wedding. Not because we're some big secret, but because they want to be humble about it. And I think there's some kind of stereotype that may come saying, oh, we're using Birch. Um, but the idea of it is that when we approach a job, right? When we're going out there, we're saying to ourselves, what about this job are we allowed to show? What are we not? And we have to be very, it's a job to, to, be, so, to be on social media. I mean, Throughout the day, we have to stop ourselves and say, hey, we need to post. We didn't post today. What are we posting? Yep. And everyone's like, we're so deep in work. What are you going to post right now? We're all staring at computers. I'm like, well, let's show everyone that we're staring at computers because this is a part of our job. This is what we do. It's still a job. you know. Yeah. That's what People don't realize that in our industry, there's just as much paperwork as there is fun. Maybe even more paperwork than there is fun. Yeah. We calculated our process, and I think it was three and a half pages long. And even then, it was shocking to me. And I don't mean pages like where it's like line after line after line. I mean it's categorized by three different columns in on one paper times three papers. And those are steps to creating your biggest day. That's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. Try putting that on like, I don't know, one of those lines where things just happen. What's yeah. it called? Oh, my God. Spectre. No, so. not the line thing. The actual, like, four did. What was uh, it called? The, assembly line. Uh, assembly line. <laughs> Jeez, I forgot the word. I'm like, oops. Damn, I'm like, that would have been so good if I would have said that at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for No, but that, that's, that's, that's it, though. And, and I think, you know, you hear so much now of people who are looking for the easy way. You yeah. Know? And people also, I think... What Instagram has done is it's made everything instantaneous in, oh, yes. in, in, in the thought. So people are actually looking back at things and going, hey, this happened overnight. When that's really far from it, you, it's 14 years, five yeah. and a half years under the Birch umbrella, Correct. but 14 years of actually putting the work in. Figuring it out. Figuring it out. Losing money, building oh, a business. Let's talk about that. Oh, let's talk let's about talk that. Let's talk about that. So I think <laughs> oh, it's, it, it's interesting, right? And again, this gets back to people never want to talk about Everyone wants to talk about their successes. Correct. Right? Like you and I did an amazing wedding in February. Yeah, that was for insane. Jackie. I was off the charts. Oh, Oh fucking gosh. one for the ages. Yeah, yeah, Literally. Yes, that was know, insanity. It was insanity. It was and a fun experience. One of the though. most also probably viewed weddings of the year on social by no far. No question. Yeah. Um, and people see that. And then they see this beautiful luxury event and then they're just like, this is what they do and this is how it happens. Just yeah. boom. 
Magic. And, 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 and so far from it, they don't talk about, hey, there's months where maybe business is slow oh and gosh. you have an overhead of this massive space to pay for Correct. and staff to pay for Correct. and payroll to pay for. Correct. And that shit doesn't go down. It only no. goes up and it never goes away. It's Correct. like taxes, right? And it's, it's always there. there. Exactly. <laughs> and it's always there. But that's a, it's actually a very interesting thing because when I speak to other competitors who I happen to be very friendly with and we talk about the way that we operate, right? I have a full staff. Full time. We're a full production company. Yes. We do full draping. We do full building. We do custom fabrication. We do our own floral. That came because it was a necessity for me when I started. Mm. In the community in which I started with, they didn't believe in this whole breakout of let's hire this company for draping and this company for, for you know, furniture and this company for linen and this co- it was always go to the event designer and they will handle everything for you so i was forced into a world of like oh wow now i need carpenters oh wow now i need drapers oh wow now i need a floor well flowers i always did but the reality was is that i had to build this company over the years starting way back when when i first came to this space which you know i'm really happy to have but also really excited to move on from it's i had to fill it up I remember at one point having an assembly line here, an assembly line, talking about the assembly line of like nine florists that would sit here every day because I would go through a week of ridiculous craziness and then I would go through a month of slow time, but then it would pick up for three weeks of craziness. So I wasn't sure being a young, naive businessman who didn't know anything about business, saying to myself, I needed these people full time so I felt secure. Mm. So if the business did come, I had people. But meanwhile, I was bleeding money every month. Mm. And people are shocked by it, but the reality is, is that I started with nothing. I came here and I just went into business. I was 19. I was young. Um, I don't necessarily come from an affluent family, neither did my wife. So we didn't have any like major push start other than major support and great work ethic and being told that you just don't quit until you succeed. I went into this blindly as a businessman and just figured it out. And I failed a lot. Mm. Over seven years, I lost an insane amount of money that like some people don't make in a really long time. Like I'm talking about well over a million dollars that I lost. I don't even know where I had it to lose from. Sure. I just remember like the stories of back then of trying to borrow money to, to pay, make payroll. And I wasn't even sure how I was borrowing it, but I borrowed from whoever I can just to make it happen. And I needed to bleed that out in order to figure out, hey, I have something here. I just need to f- grow up and figure out how to become a businessman within an industry of something that I'm passionate about, mm. not just art. Yeah, and that's fucking awesome. And I think the, the there's just the ability of, you know, I'm a big believer of, you know, sometimes you got to eat shit, right? And and, and proverbially, sometimes you have to live in it. Also, you have to live in it, and uh, <laughs> and not being able to pay your staff. You know, like we've all been there. There's, yeah. you know, and anyone who talks about like, you know, I've been doing this 19 years. You know, there's bumps and bruises in any business, and that's just par for the course. But I think that those moments uh, are what determine your moral fortitude and make you who you are as a business owner. 100%. And if you don't go through those, it'll never happen. And people only see the big win. Like we, were, I was talking about Bethany Frankel recently, right? And, okay. And people thought, like, oh. She did Skinny Girl and sold it in two years. She had five other ventures over the course of 10 years that didn't go anywhere. Right. And then she finally hit a grand slam. But it took 12 years and a bunch of failures. And then she sold the company for $140 million. Well, who's that? Like what Albert Einstein or something <laughs> says that one, like your success, a successful person is someone who fails one less time? Yes. Is that, that, is that and, and, I believe so, yeah. And, I, I love that. So. And it's so true though, because how many people in your situation, I can think of a million florists who are one and done. You know, they came in. They're in the industry for six for, months, for, yeah. and they just either a it gets too stressful, or b they they have that happen when they can't make payroll, and instead of finding a way to get to the finish line and plowing through, they just quit. I think that's a big a big thing. How many people in this industry? How many companies in this industry? And I don't know that it matters per se to the end user, but how many companies in this industry are actually making money? I think very few. It's and such a crazy money's. Thing. I think you know, and, and to actually, and I think to truly be profitable. Like yeah. not just may have a paycheck of, let's say you make $40,000 a year. Right. And I always compare it to, you know, someone was complaining recently and they're like, oh, I'm not making enough money. I'm like, well, then you're better off going to get a job at Starbucks. My you wife know, used to tell me that all the time. But, but no, like, can't you just drive people, for Uber or something? But, yeah, but for certain people, <laughs> I mean, look, you get $17 an hour, let's say as an yeah. assistant manager, 401k benefits, and three weeks paid vacation and healthcare. And healthcare. You know, and, and you don't have to worry about that. And you don't have to work, we, you know, you don't have to work Saturday night till three o'clock in the morning. Or you don't have to respond to anybody <laughs> at 3 a.m. At 3 least that, you know? Yeah. No, you're 100% right. And I think that's something that's not really so spoken about 
in our industry, everyone is after the fame. Everyone is after, and I'm not, I'm not knocking anyone. I just want to make that very clear. I think everyone, that's the persona we have to give off as success. A hundred percent. We have to no give one off. Want, well, nobody wants to work with somebody who they deem to be not successful. So you have Correct. to give that off. Well, somebody once told me, I think I was really young at the time. Someone once told, oh, I remember this. Good story. Lady walks into my office right, right when I started. I was, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I had this hanging desk. I thought I was so great. I had this really old like Microsoft computer that my dad gave me. Uh. And like, it was, it was really a funny situation. I was sharing a desk with my partner at the time. My secretary was sitting right outside my desk trying to visualize this for the painting yeah. picture behind a half a wall. So like, <laughs> if you came to see me, you were sitting in a waiting room that was really like a half a couch deep, sure. four feet from my secretary, which desk. was six feet from me uh, with a hanging desk. Okay. I thought it was so cool. Did the desk move? Damn straight it moved. <laughs> That was the craziest part. When I had like an awkward client come in, I would push the desk a little just to stir up conversation. But then it would make me so nauseous. I needed a minute. Like, where's my driving me at? Anyway, let's, let's get back into it. So here's the story. This really, one of the wealthier clients I've ever had when I first started, walked in the door. Hotel owner, big deal. I don't even know how they got to me. They were referred by a venue. All this like great stuff. Walks in the door. She sits down, the mom. The daughter's going on and on and on about her party. The mom sits down. Wipes her finger across my computer, the top of my computer. And I remember just staring at me with this dead face and sort of like, how do you say this? Because it's a podcast. I'm like, how do you say, say whatever this? You want. But what is this? How do you this say this? I'm like, I'm like moving my fingers, fingers together. together. It's like we kind of pinching too, your fingers. So okay, say, fine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's pinching your fingers together, showing me how much dust ah, just came off her fingers. Yeah. And she looked me down the eye and said nothing. Being young and curious afterwards and I also like maybe I I was a little bit more forward than I than probably should have been but I went over to her afterwards and I'm like you're a big deal I know you're a big deal and you probably know you're a big deal and you don't want me to know you're a big deal because then you're afraid I'm going to raise my prices it's this whole like spiral of garbage that doesn't matter here because I'm not going to I want to know what you were thinking when you wiped your finger across my computer and dropped the dust in front of me with this like proven wrong you're not worthy face Mm. and you know what she said to me She says, if you want a good company, she goes, everything needs to be a reflection of you. Mm. And she goes, dust on your computer is not anyone I would ever hire. Mm. And I was like, my cleaning lady comes tomorrow. (laughs) But it wasn't true. She's right. She was 100% right. Like you in this industry, the persona is really everything. And what happens behind the scenes, some people don't care about. What Birch is bringing to the table now, which a lot of companies have done as well. I'm not saying before or after me, but they do it, is now allow you to be a part of that process. It allows you to be a part of the dirt. It allows you to be a part of the chaos. It allows you to be a part of the staying up all night. It allows you the part that people don't know, which is taking a blank room and actually having to cover it with foundation that nobody sees that people are paying for. But at the end of the day is what attributes to an amazing event. And I think what you're speaking to is you offer people a behind the scenes, but it gives them an authentic experience. Authentic, and, yeah. And I'm not have, curating that. And, and you're not curating that. It's no, the I'm truth. very, very into the pressure. And I think, like, let it come. So there's so much fluff and bullshit right now yeah. that the more authentic you are to your brand and to yourself and the more you show, the easier it is for clients to relate to you. I think it's much more human. appealing. Yeah, yeah we're 100%. human people. Like, we're allowed to break. Yep. The only thing I don't have on in social media yet is all the tears, but it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the only thing I don't do is show, like, us crying at night being like we want to go to sleep so so i know you mentioned uh a couple of minutes ago you talked about your dad yeah my dad and i know big deal. I, I know i believe i've actually been on one of your car conference calls with your dad so uh, my father's a huge um you know he's the reason i'm here today you know hard worker um you know i don't come from much uh, you know my dad was blue collar and came to this country didn't speak english and he instilled in a very young age for me that you have to work for everything you want in sure. life um and i know from how you've spoken about your father and the fact that he woke up at four o'clock in the morning to set up balloons at a bris yeah he obviously instilled that into you very as well. much so listen there are some things that parents can give you mm. right um Sometimes it's money and it becomes a little bit easier in your life. My dad was always about the ethics of working. Mm. My dad was a hard worker. He has a store till today, selling balloons in Borough Park, you know, doing his thing, what he knows how to do and what he knows how to do well. When I got this opportunity to expand or when I got married and started to do flowers, he welcomed that change. But in the end, he let me do my thing. Mm. And I said it a million times, I'll keep saying it. The words of advice he gave me that will stick with me forever and ever and ever is just play. I remember my first shot at doing flowers ever. A planner walked into my dad's store for balloons for a party and 
she saw me making an arrangement in the back by myself. There was no customers. The store wasn't always so busy. I was in the back. I was just playing with flowers and making an arrangement for one of our friends that just had a baby girl. She walked in. She saw the flowers. She goes, I like that. And I'm like, thanks. Do you want to buy it? Because we haven't sold anything today. Mm. And she goes, no, I don't want to buy it, but I want to hire you for a job next week. I said, doing what? She goes, flowers. I'm like, okay. I never did a job before. I just said, okay. I was like, sure, sure. I'm, I'm on it. Tell me what you want. And back then, she just pulled out a million pictures from like magazines that she ripped sure. down. She goes, copy this, copy this, copy this, copy this. And I did it. And I was so like, whoa, there's something else out there other than just being in this tiny little space and just working by myself. And that's when those, that's when the words go play really mm. hit me. And I said, you know, I'm going to go play and see who wants to come play with me. Yeah. And now we're playing a lot. And it's, it's amazing <laughs> though, but imagine if, imagine that moment. You yeah. Know, you imagine, you imagine for whatever reason, the voice said the other thing to you and go, and, and you don't take that job, you know, and, and, and yeah. you can, and you, you and nothing I think, would have happened. Yeah, you, I mean, you, I don't know, but reality speaking, like you need yeah, to you take never, the opportunities yeah. that come your way. And I think that's a huge lesson for us, um, in this industry. I think it's a huge lesson for people in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, what we do is beautiful yeah. and fun and crazy and really chaotic, but there's a validation that comes at the end of it that I think is priceless. So would you say the biggest lesson your father ever taught you was to have fun? I think the biggest lesson my father ever taught me was to be me. If your dad's listening right now, what would we want? Please be listening. I need the support. <laughs> uh, um, if my dad was listening now, I would just say thank you. Right. I don't think I ever say thank you enough no. to my parents at all. So, hey, better time, better person? late than never. David. David, all right. Yeah, David. David. You heard it here now for the first time ever. Josh the first time I say thank you publicly. He's thank not you for sue this. you for conceiving. <laughs> 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 no, definitely not. It was good. It's been good. It's been good. Thank you for everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like he gave you the kind of the framework as to what it is to start to build that business and what the meaning of hard work is. Absolutely. And then from that stemmed everything else. And here mm -hmm. we are as Birch today, you know, company changed a few years ago to Birch. It was Josh and co, but it was slightly pretentious. So <laughs> we decided to get rid of the name. I'm not knocking anyone who has, you know, their name hey. in their, in the name of their subject. Some, and, some of us may have Vasquez. a name. Vasquez. Uh, um, <laughs> no, in reality was, is that I wanted to build a brand. I didn't want to build a name. I was actually getting tired of the fact that everyone called up and said, I need to speak to Josh. When in reality, I had so many people on my staff that were so much more talented than I was. Yep. And I was like, why don't you want to deal with them? They're so much better than me. You know, it's inherently a problem. I mean, I go through it today. People call up and go, uh, I want Anthony to shoot my wedding. And I'm like, well, we have four photographers. Yeah. And they're like, no, you don't. I'm like, no, it's Anthony Vasquez Photography Studios. Like, yeah, the studio. studio. With the studio. There yeah, people. there's people. Other people. And uh, they're like, well, you did my friend's wedding. I'm like, who's your friend? I'm like, no, Barbara shot their wedding. Yeah. And they're like, no, she didn't. I'm like, no, 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 really, she did. <laughs> she, it was, she it's, did. A big, it's a big transition. Yeah. Like, it's a convincing point, which, like, you kind of want people to come in with. Yeah. So when I was Josh and Co., I thought the Co. was, like, very apparent. Uh, but I had so many people were angry with me if I wasn't on the job. Yeah. I'm one guy, like I can't be on every job. Yep. And the reality is, is again, I surround myself, another piece of advice I got from, I don't even know who, I wish I did, thank you too. <laughs> another great piece of advice is surround yourself by people who are better than you. Yes, great. it's the truth. It is the truth. Surround yourself by people who are better than you because I don't know better than other people. Yes. But I like to learn and I feel like I can adapt it and use it in my own way and make it amazing. So the reality is, is to go with it. You know? I think the reason we don't surround ourselves a lot of the time with people who are better than us is because our ego is afraid. I that hate ego. And if, ego list, pride list. Yep. I tell that to people on the phone all the time. Yeah. Um, You're not dealing with like some ego. And it's funny because some people, because of Instagram, more people than not, and I know this is a fact because my friends like – kill me for this all the time you're so pretentious you're mm. so ego egotistical like you're always on instagram you're always posting your face you're always, i'm like what am i supposed to do if i don't put myself out there i'm nobody and i'm not trying to be somebody to be somebody big and be like oh look who i am i'm josh from birch events that's cool and that came along with it but the reality is i just want people to know that i exist sure period relevance is you I and mean, it's funny like i mean now i've i've have a 20 year body of work in this industry and I've seen so many people become irrelevant very fast, especially now. Now is the and hardest it, time because really it's it's momentary. Like yep. you get on Instagram today, you get on social media today, you know, like if you don't stay in their faces at all times, whether you look like a fool, whether you look amazing or not, you're not there. It's seven, but it's also, you know, it's part of our brands. It's a seven day a week project. It never Correct. ends. Social does not sleep. Doesn't. And, I, and people who have not adapted to it. I think are going to have huge problems coming forward. Probably, and, and, yeah. and, you know, without a doubt. And I think there's some brands who I see. I'm not going to talk shit about who, but 
they don't do anything on social and they've been riding on their coattails of all the success they had in the 80s, 90s and the yeah. 2010 decade and 2020 as as our clients are going to shift to yeah. Gen Zers. Gen Zers. I just yeah. learned about Gen Zers by the by. And and they're going to consume content in a completely different manner. Yeah. Those dinosaurs are going to go and that's going to be it. And they cuz they haven't adapted to the to the market. So anyone who talks shit about how prevalent you are on social media, let them keep talking the shit. Go for it. Go yeah. for it. And, yeah. and at the end of the day because five years from now, not that you'd laugh at it, no, but you'll still have a very strong business and brand that's doing great, and they're going to have faded. And 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 and, 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 listen, and there's that's nothing wrong with that. Because everyone does do it. Does have their time in this industry? I've I've always said it. I, I think I said it a lot to my employees over the years of training. I would just say to them, everyone has their time. My time has come. Maybe now. I don't even think it's there yet. I think we're we're getting there. I think that we're almost there, but I don't think that we're there yet. I have much more grander, ver- you know, visions for Birch than what what it is today. I'm very proud of what it is today. I'm content. If today was forever, I would be thrilled. But in my head, because of tasting the idea of trying new things, being an opportunist, going forward every day, saying I'm going to make the most out of this sure. opportunity, and just say okay, I now have opened my eyes to future things that I think are so much more impactful and ways maybe that we can help the society. Maybe we could help in a way. Maybe we could be bigger than just doing a party and, and bigger than just being people in a party. I think we could we can actually be important to some extent. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't know. But for now I'm extremely happy with where we are. And to go back to your point, like I don't know what everyone else is going to do. But the reality is the Gen Z generation even completely does things differently than the millennials uh, generation, which is has been our client till now, is all the millennials, right? The and millennials come in. Shift. I watch you on yep. Instagram, blah blah blah, and all these things. And I love your work, and I love your personality. I want you to be a part of our wedding or a part of our day. And by the way, same thing goes with corporate. The amount of corporate companies that have called us based off of following us on Instagram is is laughable. I'm like, why are you following us? Like, this is so funny. Like, why? And they're like, well, it's entertaining. Interesting. Who has you know, time for a, TV? <laughs> that took that took you know social basically broke down all the barriers where you know it used to take ten years of knocking on somebody's door. Correct. You can knock on their door virtually from your office now, or you can just put up content and somebody sees it and they share it. Yeah. And next thing you know, someone's like, "Oh, I like Josh's personality." Let in me the follow. middle of the day, or it's two a.m. Yeah. I, I like your two a.m. posts. I always laugh at those <laughs> Thank uh, you. with the little alarm. I'll, d- I'll do it on purpose now. <laughs> I'll wake myself up at one forty-five, run outside, and <laughs> <laughs> the video. Thank you. Day for Anthony, I'm working with um, you. <laughs> but and I think that that. That's, that's a huge part of what you do, and I think that just inherently connects with people. Yeah, I but hope so. we, we were just talking really briefly, and, and I, you made me think of something from uh, from my past. Was I was 22 years old, and I remember signing a lease in New York City for this really sick space. And I remember six months later not having the business to support the lease. Oh God, you yeah, know? we were just talking about this. Yeah, and, and those are the days. <laughs> and I remember, I remember eight months in calling the landlord and being like, "Hey, you know, I'm 23 years old. I made a mistake." And yeah. he's like, well, what'd you do? I'm like, I took up space. It was too big, too soon. I'm just not yeah. prepared for it. And and he was a nice guy. He goes, look, kid, I give you, you know, you have a real good set on you, like A for effort. He's like, you know, he's like, don't let this, don't let this ruin your life. And he's like, I'll give you back your security and I'll rent the space. Wow. He's like, I, I appreciate the fact that you gave, that you even fucking tried. And I was like, oh, I was really generous. That's really this guy, nice. Because at the time I needed the $3,000 security <laughs> went back too. So I, was I like, hear that. You know, um, but something at that moment, where I was like, all right. I failed, right? And, and I remember I was 23 years old. I was like, but I want to be one of New York City's top wedding photographers. I don't know if I've ever actually even told the story. So I had a small shop on Long Island. And so I feel like we share this similarity with, with our businesses. And I remember I got a suitcase, a really nice one. Which okay. We were just talking about suitcases. We were just talking about to like, what, what travel kind of suitcase now, we yes, would be. Yeah. I travel with a, a very small Samsonite that I've had for 10 years. And I like it. It's, it's a great, it it's a great suitcase. Great suitcase. I like that suitcase. Lifetime warranty. Um, <laughs> but I went out and got a really nice suitcase. And I would, um, now I didn't have a studio in New York City, but I had a studio in Long Island. But I wanted to be a top New York City photographer. So I said, all right, screw it. I'm just going to meet people wherever I need to meet them. So if it's a fancy client, I'm going to go to the Four Seasons, and I'm going to buy them coffee, which was like eighteen dollars, which is ridiculous. You know, it's of course, yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. But at least I'm going to be in an, in an atmosphere, atmosphere that feels that's luxurious, end, right? Yeah. Now that being said, I'd meet people at Starbucks, at Borders Books back then when there were bookstores sure. anywhere, and I'd roll around with a stupid suitcase off the train and drag it up the flight of stairs at 23 years old, and I did this for two years. And then finally, somebody came to me and goes, hey, I have a studio space in New York City. I really like you. Why don't you throw me $300 a month, and you can just meet your clients there. Three hundred dollars. Does yeah, everyone hear that? Three hundred dollars a month. month. Right. He goes. Nineteen sixty six. By the way, he goes. <laughs> well, my friend. The story was his friend owned the building. And okay. He go. We took the first floor apartment, 
And he goes, he's giving it to us, you know, for a thousand bucks a month, throw me $300 and we're good. That's to crazy. Go. He's crazy. Good for you. It was a great deal until, oh, until, they, said, until, until they said we had to leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and then you're like, wait, I'm homeless. Yeah. And well, after six years, he goes, uh, you know, you've been here six years now. Uh, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm like total red $72,000. My part of six years was like 15 grand. That's I'm like, crazy. this is beautiful. He goes, how old do you know? I, 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 this is eight years ago. I said, I'm 30. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know, that apartment you've been in for a thousand dollars a month is worth 4,500 yeah. now. Get the fuck Get out. out. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it with love. And he was genuinely the nicest guy. That's still an awesome opportunity. It was a great opportunity. Had. But that day I called up one of my clients and now I have the, um, I closed it. And in that moment, at that moment was life, something came to me and said, close Long Island, be done with that immediately. Move to the city. Move to the city. Got and it. eight years ago, same that thing. Was thing. We went all in. Um, I'm in the space I'm in now. And it was the best great, decision of my great life. Great space. I Thank like you. your space. But it, it was that fortitude of saying, fuck, like, you know, my back kept on being put up against the wall up right. until I was 30 years old. Make I was the 10 decision. Years in. No. Make the decision and go for it. Yeah. You know, and blindly I look back on that and go, man, holy shit. Like, yeah, that was a big deal. Big deal. It was, now I look at it, I'm like, game oh, that was changer. nothing. But it was a game changer. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today had that decision not been made for me, had he not kicked me out of my $300 a month. It's such a spot. crazy way of like life just like throws you in different you yep. know on different roads and you're just like okay now i'm just gonna keep driving yeah there are some people who just can't do that and i i mean i've worked with people who can't do that and i try really hard to like push them forward and be like no you own the road you yep. drive your car so just keep driving mm. for me i think it was quite opposite i did wasn't nice enough to call my landlord and say hey i can't afford rent anymore <laughs> i was like let me see how long we can go without him showing up <laughs> Oh man, we're closed today. <laughs> um, when he came, you, you, and did he, you tell him every day Shabbos? This yeah, he, he <laughs> like it was like Shabbos every day. He came, he came quite often. He yelled at me quite often. We're very good friends today. I'm still here. I looked at it quite different. I said to myself, you know what? I'm just not going to let that get in the way of me doing me. Yeah. So I'll figure it out, and I did. But it was painful, and it was scary, and I cried a lot, and I lost a lot. But at the end of the day, like here I am. I like to tell people, a lot of people go spend money on these fancy colleges to get business yeah, degrees, sure. and I think that that's great. To yeah, it's awesome. Degree. Jealous. This is, this is our This masters. is our, yeah, this yeah, is like the way this we was, do the, like, This was learning. School Try hard knocks, fire, right? Yeah, school hard knocks, and it, there's two ways to learn, and, and I didn't go the fancy school route. I know you didn't go the fancy school route. I didn't school. go to any school route. Uh, any school people route. People go to be like, what school do you go to? I'm like, mm, mm. graduate high school. Graduate high school. And then I got married because Whoa. I didn't want to lose my wife. <laughs> Because she was going to leave me. Well, which, <laughs> so I proposed which, instead. So, which is interesting because I, I don't know if a lot of people – so you've crossed over. And I remember very specifically two years ago, you and I were sitting at Boca Ria in New York City. Yeah, yeah. And we are having drinks and we're talking about markets. Yeah, right? markets. And, and at that markets. point, you were heavily, heavily, heavily in the modern Orthodox religious community. I was in the Orthodox community um, solely. Solely. Yeah. And I remember we were sitting there having drinks and I'm like, when are you crossing over to the secular market? And you smiled and now you've crossed over to the secular market. I don't know market. how it happened. No, no, you oh died. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't I think you're a little it's, more strategic than that. I think, I think so. I don't think I was planning for it the way I was. Like I like to give, I would like to take the credit for, being, the, for thinking ahead. You did though. I don't know. No, you did. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't remember <laughs> consciously having a, a, like this mindset of, hey, this is how I'm going to do it. I think I just let social media do its thing. Mm. And then every opportunity that came, came. I remember very, very, very clearly. One of the, the really big people at Mac was one of my first non-Jewish clients. She came mm. in here. She was the most amazing woman, like the most amazing. She came in with a, bu a binder that was maybe as thick as three textbooks in colleges big. Like it was fat. And it was labeled by dress, by fabric, by color, by flower. I've never seen anything like it because in the Orthodox world, in the Jewish market, it's not as detailed. And if it is, then it's going through a planner. So she came in, no planner, her and her mom, amazing women. Um, and they sat down. It was very intimidating, but she was so sweet. So I had a great meeting with them. She then called, I called her back like a week later saying, hey, I'm going to send you the proposal. What do you, I know exactly what you want because your book read it to me. I'm going to figure out how to, you know, take it and make it my own. I made it my own. I sent her back a proposal. She says, beautiful proposal. I'll get back to you. But I remember this being my, like my number one first non-Jewish client. She was Christian, hardcore Christian. He was a Mormon or a uh, Menzonite. It's interesting. Mennonite? Is that a, uh, no, that's a diamond. Mennonite. Mennonite. Mennonite is like a stone. Okay. Mm. Sorry for confusing that. Um, so Mennonite. Very interesting couple. Like super hipster, young New York. Like really, really cool. I kept calling them every week, following up. Like, what's the deal? What's the deal? Because I was so excited by this opportunity, even though it was a Saturday and I knew it was going to be difficult for me because I was going to sleep in some hotel or in a basement somewhere just to be there. It was in this amazing manner up in the Bronx. And like, I wanted the wedding because it was so different than what I'm 
used to. And it was a creative path, pass for me, a creative pass for me, for something unique. And she finally got back to me after four weeks and said, we're making our final list of vendors that we're considering next week, and we'll get back to you. I said, list, how many people are you interviewing? She goes, eight of New York City's top designers. I was like, well, yeah, I'm in the top designer list. Like, am I one of the eight or am I number nine? Like, what's the deal? Ah. And she said, no, 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 you're one of the top eight. I'm like, interesting. And then after we got the client, I remember meeting her at the manor. We went to this really ugly hotel that was nearby to figure out where I was going to stay. And we were just drinking coffee. And I said to her, I'm like, why us? What made you choose mm. us? I know everyone else can relate to you so much more. Tell me what made you choose Birch. When, I, when she listed the names, I was like shocked that I was even in their company. So I was like so humbled. And to have gotten it was like, whoa. So I said to her, I'm like, what made you choose us? And she said, you wanted the job. Mm. You cared about us as people and what we want for the day. Not so much as about you. We, you came to the table with taking our ideas, listening to our ideas, and making it what we wanted. Mm. And not necessarily about what you needed for your brand. And she goes, that to me was everything I wanted to feel. Because that day, I don't want to think about it. And I think that's the turning point for me. That was when I realized service is more important than anything else. Listening is more important than anything else. And never miss what they're saying because everything they're saying is important. Mm. Translate into their event and to make a gorgeous party out of it. And now, two and a half years later, two years later, something like that, like here we are and actually shot that wedding with Christian Auth, I think. I don't know if I'm to say that, but he was, I never even heard of him. And it was such a beautiful wedding. 620 Left and Garden? No, it was in Alder Manor in the Bronx. Ah. It was so creepy. It was amazing. Like I walked in there, I remember saying them, I remember saying to them, this is where they film Black Book or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in that giant pool. Mm. I was just like amazed by it. It was amazing. And Sorry the rest is that. history. <laughs> the rest is history. Oops. <laughs> My bad. Now yeah. breaking into the secular market. Has been fun. Yeah. Also financially, from a business standpoint. So from a business standpoint, the secular market's easier in a sense because they're a lot more educated, I would say, in terms of event design and, mm. and product cost and labor cost and everything else because most of the weddings are in the city. So you're getting this experience that already comes with it or planners that already come with it sure. that they know what things are going to cost. And they're, I think they're slightly more educated in terms of what the end result needs to be. While in my original market, I think we had to educate a lot more. Mm. And we were always on this battle of like, are you too expensive or are you actually accurate? And I'd be like... There is a difference in what we provide and what other florists provide. I'm not saying that what they provide isn't good enough or not sufficient. What I am saying is that we're slightly more edited. We put a little bit more thought into it. We don't just throw things. We try not to. I'm not saying others do. But we tend to sit back and say, how is this going to picture? How is this going to look in an album for the rest of your life? But you know, you shot our weddings. I know. You know our work. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, you make it look great. What, uh, let's do that. Let's, uh, what, what are the, the current – so obviously you've built this. Yes. And I think building it is um, one thing, right? We both Huge built thing. our businesses. Yeah. Maintaining it. Maintaining, yeah. And, and elevating okay. are separate. Because separate. I feel like once, I actually truly feel this way, that I think it's factual. I think once you make it uh, to a certain point, uh, you're there. Yeah. It's now harder to maintain, to maintain and still elevate and, and still elevate because 100%. now when when we were younger no yep. one expected anything of us as a matter of Zero. fact it was the opposite yeah if we did a good job they're like oh my Hooray. god this, this kid's 25 and, and he created these it. great pictures now they come in and go no, doesn't that hurt though now like yeah, we're like no. older and we're like oh well, uh, love I, me still i, I got the you young face today i like her i shaved today i have no beard <laughs> uh, well one of the girls in my office told me uh, i look older when I have a beard because it's so gray, so that I've been shaving lately or diet midlife whatever. crisis. But I hear. Uh, <laughs> so same as now that we've you've you've achieved this, the level of expectation, oh right? So now it's transcended from um, hiring Birch to Birch is creating an immersive experience yeah. on a special weekend. I love that word. And and Thank but you. it's true though because yeah. they, like a lot of beer, it's it's a full weekend event. Right? Yeah. Like for Jackie, o. we're yeah. on the rooftop of a New York City venue. Yeah. Uh, one day, w one day, which is private, and you can't just you know, it's like Could this, be is, social something. Media. this yep. is something. This is something. To the Pierre Hotel, to, to a hotel. wedding that now is going to be seen across the board. To Forever. two months later, being in the same room yep. with one of New York City's top wedding planners, yep. and who demand the best, which yes. is why I like working with them. Same, um, because I feel like they make you raise your own bar because Correct. their level of expectation is so high. And then that client saw what we did two months before, yeah. And I remember she's like. I want the same thing, but better. Yes. And now it's like, oh shit, wait, well, I mean better. I like, would we do just, better than we that. We just killed it. I love that job. I was like, whoa, but better. We did. 
and it was because so because good. the expectation level, like we just kept, I, I remember, it just kept elevating. I mean, at elevates. the end of the day, you have to keep yep. challenging yourself. I think I said it. My sister called me. It's a big family event today. Normally, I don't ever speak to them. I speak about them. I speak to them. Um, <laughs> my sister, not so much, but my sister um, called me up and she goes, what are you busy with in July? I heard it's a slow month. I'm like, well, I'm working on my foundation. She goes, Joshua Foundation, you have a foundation. The foundation's the bottom of the company. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you should be sure. above that already. You should be into the main building. You want to repaint? Fine. But like... Working, I said, honey, there are cracks that happen. There are, there is, you know, water damage. There's stuff that happens in the foundation that you need to constantly go back to Uh, and say, how do I fix it? And if I just ignore it and just say my foundation is strong enough, then eventually you crumble. So, and I, I remember saying this specifically to my team maybe a year and a half ago. And I said, you are my team that I want to build on. You are the pillars Mm. in which are going to support the company. You want to be here, be here. You don't want to be here, I understand that too. This is a platform for you. Just say, this is a platform for me. This is not my long-term goal. And I'm totally fine with that because everyone in life changes and moves on. Of course. Obviously, things have shifted. But I want your attitude to be like, I want to be the reason why Birch is successful. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, you are, you know, one thing I've seen in my business is the... The better my team is, the better my business is. It's that. 100%. It's, it's 100%. Because it's not us. It's not us. We're the, crazy. I mean, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm crazy. Like, yeah. I walk through a job and I'm like, I walk through anything. I get, I get presented an event. I'm very vague when it comes to design at the beginning. Mm. I'll be like, I see this and I see that. Sylvia's laughing things. when you said very vague. Why? That's like trying to talk to me. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you don't get it? Yeah, she's they're like, like well, you can't what? read I'm your like, mind. No, no, no. It's in here. Yeah, yeah. Sylvia, why are you not here? And she'll be look at me like, what What are you asking me to do? And I'm like, what are you saying? No, I'm saying it. Yeah. She'll be like, Dude, is this how you want it done? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, you did not that. say that. You yeah. said orange and you meant pink. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I said what I meant. I meant that shade between <laughs> orange and pink. But it's more to the pink than it is to the orange. But it has orange in it. I know exactly I can relate fully. So I look at my team for support on everything across the board. And they're always like, Josh, you need to speak in full sentences. I'm like, I need to move on. Yeah. And she's like, and they're like... They're like, but we we can't yep. read your mind. I'm like, well, let's take a lesson. I'm, yeah. You know, but like the reality is, is you learn to adapt to people. People learn to adapt with you. And that's the only way we could be successful. If we did this ourselves, we'd be overwhelmed. We'd be, we'd be drinking every possible. night. We'd be it's drinking per- every night. Yeah, and I think it goes back to something else we were talking about before we started shooting, which is we've both built businesses to scale now. And yes. obviously you're scaling up. And as you start to scale up, the importance of your team, like you strategically bringing Alan on, yeah, that, that obviously was thought out. And, and well, it was really, he's a major, major guy. Like it didn't even like come from the fact of like let me see where he was before. I got to know him so much as a friend sure. and understand him a lot as a friend, and just felt like in our business when you have good teammates and people that you're friends with yes. and people that care as much as you do about and have passion like you do to be the best or be greater than you are today or constantly grow. I think those people are people you need to align yourself with. Yeah. So with that situation specifically, again, I'd love to give myself credit and be more, to have been more strategic. But the reality is, is that all the stars aligned at the right time. Yeah. And he's been amazing. I mean, he's so, really I, the best. I think you're, you're, it's almost like what you're doing is self deprecating. Like you have to give yourself more credit because obviously you, when you, that opportunity arose, somebody you, took it, you took it. Yeah. And, and, and if you didn't take it, somebody else, would have somebody taken else would have taken it. Correct. And now, you know, fast forward a year later, Here we you have are. a star in your, in your, in on your team, Correct. who, who I'm, I see now because he's always with you at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> a bright star, a very <laughs> bright star. And, and, and curating and being able to maintain and also hold on to that kind of talent is, is, is the crucial part. Because it's not like you had him here for a week. Correct. You're developing a long-term relationship. A hundred percent. I fully believe in your success is my success. So also another one of these sayings. I don't know. Do I live on these sayings? Like right, should I have these sayings. written down yeah. somewhere. Like I don't even. It's just like you have enough space pop, in here. Yeah, I should just write it on the walls before I bounce. <laughs> see, I see you. Um, the saying is, if you're a winner doesn't mean I'm not a winner too or yep. something like that. Maybe I messed it up. But the idea is that just because someone else is winning doesn't mean that I need to lose. Yep. And I do believe in building your team. I do believe – I understand a natural organic way of life where people do leave and open up their own companies of and course. do their thing. I get it. Try not to be you know, a total – Idiot from it. I'm like trying to use a nice word. Try try not to be, you know, well, I think it's how they do it. it. For me, it's always been not that they leave, it's how you leave. Well, it's also where you're going. And also that makes a huge difference. And also transparency about it. Yeah. For people listening out there who are working for other people, Josh and I are not hating on you right now. What we are saying though is if you're gonna use and I don't want to say use us, but if you're going to use us, um, use the platform. Use the platform of us. Yeah. 
it's your exit strategy is so important because Correct. if somebody came to me and said, look, like one of my guys came to me three years ago and he's like, Ant, I love you, bro. And you gave me an opportunity. I was in a bad place uh, mentally. I was in college. I didn't know what I want to do with the rest of my life. You were really close to my dad. You gave me a job. And I'm like, What's, where are you going? He's yeah. like, dude, I got my dream job. And I was like, oh, dude, are you fucking kidding me? I was so happy for him. Right. He's like, um, he's working with hip hop artists, which was his dream. That's cool. And it's cool. And I mean like real hip hop artists. Like he's with Wiz Khalifa last week. Like legit, like he's doing legitimate shit. Yeah. But it's the way he handled it. He was like, thank you for the opportunity. I, I learned so much here. We're still be- we're still friends. And he still works with me in some capacity. I, I love that. He didn't implode so the bridge. Important. Well, first of all, never burn a bridge. Ne- ever, ever, ever. Ever burn a bridge. Not worth it. Especially in, 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 in for our people industry. listening, don't do that in this industry. No, it is so small, small it'll ruin you. Everybody, everyone. And, and there's somebody who burned a bridge. Right. Let's yeah. talk about burning bridges. I'm 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 not gonna mention the name. Yeah, don't but do that. <laughs> even though it would be a good platform. It would be a good do platform it. to do. <laughs> um but he, he burned a bridge. Yeah. And he called and he keeps calling and, and I feel bad for the guy because he burned this bridge and he he's trying to repair it and it's done. No right. one will touch him anymore in any capacity because the industry is so small. Everyone goes, oh, hey, Josh, you'll come to me and be like, hey, what'd you hear about that guy? I'm like, I heard the story. I don't know if it's true or not. Right. Once your name is attached to something it's like that, it. it's o- well, it's yeah. over. You got to leave. Like, leave him in New York. The yeah, industry is so small. Yeah. You know, there's five photographers, five florists, yeah. 10 venues at the top right. and they all know each other. And everybody. once you burn it, it's and done. And everybody knows everybody's people. Yes. So like, just to play on that a bit, it's not even so much if you leave and go to somewhere else. Obviously, always be transparent about yes. it. Always be like, hey, I'm not happy here. I think that's the bigger part for me because whoever's left me and gone to other florists, or other designers, I've always stressed the importance of, of transparency in that thought process. Yeah. So don't just wait till you're done making your decision because I think that's not right. I think that if you trust your employer – you trust your people. You should go over them and have the ability to say to them. At least here, it's that case. Um, go to them and say, hey, I'm not happy here. Mm. And it's because of this, this, and this. And can you change it? Can it be changed or can it not be changed? If the person then says, I can't afford more money. I understand you need more sure. money. I can't afford it. Then it's your blessing to move elsewhere. Of course. Because then they can't provide for you anymore what you're looking for. I mean, then if you go to another company and take a pay cut, that's kind of a douche move. But the reality is, is that most people are not looking for that. So, or if they're just unhappy in your process and then you say, okay, well, why don't you bring something to the table? I'm open to learning from Uh. your process. If the person that you're working for is not capable of change, not capable of being human about it and saying, you know what? I'm not better than you. I just know more or no different, not more, no more, no different than you. Educate me and let's see if we can make this work. If you're important Mm. enough, if I dismiss you, as not important, or I don't listen to what you have to say. At that point, it's your right to say, you know what? I've tried everything I can. I'm going to look for another. I only know flowers. I yes. only know events. I need to look for another job in the event market. But don't just decide tomorrow that you get a new job without approaching your current employer as long as they're normal. It's, that's a big, you know, uh, a big thing. As long as they're normal and approachable, I think that's a big lesson for people. Just I would do that. I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the it's a respectful thing. And I think you'll be much more you'll be looked at so much better in the industry if you go out now and you're working for a planner and sure. now you become a planner. What do you think is gonna happen? Of course. Now you could turn around and say, Well, this planner is gross and she doesn't do the right work and I'm gonna go there and figure out how to do it better. Or you can say, I left I got tons and tons of tons of knowledge from this planner. I need to go on my own because I wasn't making enough or there wasn't enough business or whatever the reason is. You never talk bad about them. You just Move in a positive motion. Like then the industry will respect you and take you in. Yeah, there's nothing to be gained. And, and it's funny, you know, when people talk shit and – It's just uh, a lot in this a business. A lot in this business. But in general, you yeah. know, I think it, it leads to two things. Um, so I was, I was with a group of people recently and someone said something uh, negative about somebody else. And then the person uh, sitting next to me looks at me and goes, Anthony, did, did they do that in front of everybody? And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. And, I, and at that moment I was like – it's not that they said something bad about that person. It's after dinner, are they now going to say something bad, bad about, about, that, me. Yeah. about me? Yeah. And I'm like, no, it makes total sense that you that you bring that up because I'm like, you know, and I'll address that with them because maybe they're not even conscious of yeah, how Yeah, some that's people perceived. feel comfortable also because we get to exactly. play with our, with our vendors and venues and exactly. our, our, our mutual respected colleagues in this industry. And we're out eating and we're out drinking and we do get loose and we get comfortable because at the end of the day, like we work so many yep. hours, this is our downtime yep. and who better to... You know, shoot the breeze with than other people in this industry. Yeah. So 
I think that it's a big deal that they that people have to be on their A game when they're they're, they're saying what they're saying. Yeah, and I think and I think it's you know again yes you can get loose, but there's always this pl- place of you need to handle yourself professionally at all times, and always one always remember like somebody's watching or somebody's oh seeing what's going on. And it's cool, but it, there's always like that line, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, sometimes I see stuff and I'm like, man, uh, you may not want to put that version of yourself out there Correct. because once it's there, people have seen it and they're going to place judgment upon you for right. that, for that moment. And that may not be who you are, but that's all they're going to remember. And by the way, you're also representing a brand probably. And so here you are, you're representing a brand, you're out there, yes. you're being you. First of all, what, what do they say? Um, persona's truth, not persona's truth. Um, perception's truth. Perception's truth. Perception's truth, right? That's A. So if I perceive you to be an ass, I mean, then that's, I'm walking away from it yeah. saying that. That's A. Whether or not you are or aren't or were in the moment, if that's all I know of you because I just met you, that is what's going to happen. Now, to shift gears for a second and say to yourself, what are you doing in this industry? Who am I in this yes. industry? Who am I? to the outside world and how will they respect me if I act a certain way? And I think you, uh, adding to that, you need to have an honest reflection of yourself. A hundred percent. And I think right now people have this very inflated self-worth oh gosh, of, yes. of who that. we think we are. Um, and you know, it, it was funny. Somebody recently said to me, um, Anthony Vasquez, are you Anthony Vasquez? I said, yeah. So she goes, I'm completely underwhelmed. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, un- underwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like well, yeah, I was like, underwhelmed. Huh? And I kept, I walked away with it and I said, man, you know what's funny? I said, maybe one day she's going to need a job. Yeah, and maybe. Gonna, maybe. 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 Who knows? She's a photographer and maybe I'm going to remember the fact that, that she's she told me she was underwhelmed. Maybe you'll respect her for honesty. I, 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 I do appreciate the honesty. Listen, you know? for me specifically, like I have a big tolerance for honesty. I'd rather you tell me how it is I'm okay. Like, I'll learn. I'm sure. young. What am I? Well, what am I? I'm like, oh, what, how old am I? Am 21. I to, I'm 23. Um, but I'm young enough to learn. Yeah. So, like, let's learn from the people around us. Let's figure out how to be better people, which in turn, you know, helps our business. For sure. I, I, I respect that. I'm into it. So, as you've, as you've scaled. Yes. What are the hurdles? Oh, boy. Yeah. Right. So forget the financial aspect. We know we talked about that yeah. and all the money that comes, all the money now that you need to generate as you've scaled your team Correct. and you bring on talent. Yeah. Talent costs, talent costs uh, by money. The way, talent Keeping costs ca- money. talent costs money. Keep, keeping talent costs even more money. Yeah. Um, good talent for sure. Good for sure. What, what are the issues you're running into now at, at scale? At scale. So hurdles are obviously staff is always mm. the biggest. Is always the it biggest. is? It is. I can't imagine why. <laughs> there's so much personality <laughs> in staff. Um, it's keeping good people, finding good people. Sure. You have people every day reach out to you that are young and impressionable that maybe they will be the next big thing. Maybe I should take them under my wing. Do I have the patience to take them under my wing? Am I who I used to be when it came to training my, my staff? Because they used to really tag along with me everywhere. I used to make, make, I used to require... That somebody, this is actually a little bit of a secret, but here's what it is. I used to require, and I should still do that, I'd go back to this, require someone to intern by me for six weeks Mm. before I ever hired them on any capacity. I don't care if you're a secretary, a project manager, a designer, a planner. It didn't matter. Well, it's like dating before you get married. Of course, it's the same concept. In our world, though, people want jobs immediately. They need the money tomorrow. It was a free internship, too. Mm. Because I'm a big believer, invest in yourself for me to invest into you. I pay well. Like, I'm not the type of person who's going to walk away and say, no, he's cheap. He's not going to pay well. Like, I'll pay you your worth, but I don't know what your worth is. And that was another thing. If I ever hired somebody, and everyone that used to work for me knows this, if I ever hired you and you were let go, it was because you priced yourself out. You came in. I asked you what your value was. You gave me a price. Mm. I went with that price or close to it, that salary, right? But after a few months, you weren't worth that salary. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing too. And if, like, you, you can't just expect it. You know, imagine if somebody came to you and goes, Josh, I want to make more money. But yeah. here's 10 ideas of how I can increase Birch's bottom line revenue. 100%. Oh, my God. And then you, and then they go to you, okay, here's 10. Maybe you can pick three that you think actually work for right. Birch. Can I handle that project for the next six months? If I execute that project and make Birch more money, then can I have a raise? I would give them a raise today for bringing it to my attention and then allowing them to go through that process of those three stages. If it's successful, I get asked. I'd have them keep it in plus, or I would just like be like, okay, it didn't work out. Let's go back. I get asked. I want to raise. Well, I want to raise too. And I tell them, well, I want to raise too. Right. And, but for what? They're like, well, I did my job. No, no, no. Let me explain something to you. You were hired to do a job. Right. Doing the job is one thing. Is one thing. Yep. That's what you were paid to do. Exceeding the expectations Ex- of the exactly. job. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the person goes, 
I, well, I show up every time and I do my work. Well, I fucking show up and do my work too. That's yeah. you, I'm paying That's part of the you. job. Yeah. Now I'm like, how about? So I gave them three ideas. I'm like, here's some ideas on how, how to, you how, can increase your revenue through us. It's eight months. Right? Yeah, exactly. They're I there. did the same thing. I've done it with employees before. I've done it. I remember at one point I had a very key member here, and I knew they weren't getting paid enough for the, for their things. So sure. I approached them with a raise. They said, "Listen, I need more to live and to do whatever." And I said, "Fine, I'll give you more." Here are the three things, like you said, yeah. that are affecting me and my bottom line right now that are in under your wing mm. that I really would have expected you to do on your own, but I'm giving it to you. If you do it, keep the job. Yes. If you don't do it, don't keep the job. That simple. And in the end, he straight out told me I can't do it. I'm like, but that's where my bottom line gets sucked out. Like the smallest things in this industry, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but from a floral and design perspective, they're perishable. They die. They break. And if they break, this doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. So if I only needed 12 of these and I had 13 and you break three of them, it's what over. am I doing right now? Yeah. I'm spending – I have to buy 13 more because that's what it comes in or 10 more. That's what comes in a bunch. I have to Uber it from the city to my job. I need – like take care of our product like you take care of your own. And that's something I've always stressed. I really consider myself – on the ball when it comes to working with people because I'm a big believer in making money with people, not on people. A little secret also. Mm. But, and I think that's a huge deal. I tell everyone, and I approach, it, I approach it the same way with every employee. I approach it with every teammate, with every person that's ever worked, with every freelancer and every intern. If you figure out how to make this work for you, I will figure out how to make yes. it work for us. It's like that simple. Like come to the table with something that like, that we all benefit from and then we can move on from, from it. Like, I want to see that you care. The number one most important thing on the list for Birch when you apply for a job, and I probably shouldn't give this away, is care. Mm. Care. If you care about the company, then I know I'm in good hands. How about no? And you know it too. Like we interviewed recently. And someone walks in and goes, I'm here to interview with Anthony. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go get him for you. And they didn't catch it. And I'm going, you didn't even take the time to, to go look on my at website. Me, like, to see who I am. I mean, but it's on my Facebook page, the website, yeah, yeah. Instagram. It's not like you have to look far. Right. And it's not like it's an ego thing. It's it's a simple, like, you didn't invest five a minutes minute. of your own yeah. time. Like, Birch is not your name, but I want I should at least know Josh, Alan, who your assistant is. So when yeah. I walk in, I can say, hey, Ezra, it was great to meet you. Yeah. And he might go, Josh, that guy knew my it's name. Memorable. And it's, it's that, memorable. And maybe that's the that's difference it. between that's the person that gets the job. As opposed to the person, the five person. other people who don't realize those yeah. little tiny things that make a huge so much. difference. Like for me, I think that is key. I mean, all this is really awesome business talk because at the end of the day, like these are some things I don't think everyone talks about. Yeah, these are things that nobody, honestly, I don't think anyone talks. No one talks about struggle. No one right. talks about struggles are real deal. And struggles, you know what? I think the, the it's 20% highlight, 80% shit, right? And, Agreed. And, and entrepreneurial shit, Agreed. right? But we only talk about the 20%. We don't focus in on the other 80%, which is building a team, maintaining a team, keeping morale high. Yeah. Um, what goes into building a team? Right? And a company based on a team. Like yeah. what, what happens beyond that? Yeah. From the garbage that has to be removed from a building all the way through, I've done, I mean, this is me, am I crazy? I've left plates out in this showroom specifically to see who's going to pick it up. Yep. Like I do it on purpose. Because I want to know that people are treating my house like their house. Yep. Because it's not my house. It's our house. Yeah. And I explain it to them all the time. I'm like, our success at Birch is your success as a person. The more we grow, the more you grow. I'm not, I'm not an asshole. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, great, I'm raining money. And now everyone underneath me could just stay put. It's not my jam. It's not who I am as a human. So, like, I want to be successful with a team that has my back, that cares so much, that they don't know what to do with themselves. And... Okay, fine. You don't have to be up till four o'clock in the morning with me, though it's nice because otherwise I'm just talking to my camera <laughs> and I'd like company. You know what though, but that's, but, yeah. but that's part of it too, though, for people who want, you know, who want to surround themselves by you, this is what we do. It's and now they do. don't have to do that. But if, you know, I always love when people drop in, I want to be you or I want to be the next Josh, let's say. Right. And it's like, Oh wait, what do you mean? I can't have off. Well, it's off, off, off June. Love that. Off. Like, don't talk to me in June. Like, can hey, I take you? a PTO and off, please? And, you know, but, June, it, please? It, but it's like, I want to, <laughs> I, I don't want to work these weekends. And it's like, no, you, 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 we're all going to work these weekends Correct. You know? and, because that's what needs to get done. And like this past Sunday, there was a, bla a power outage where my office was. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. But you know, we have everything backed up and all those things, but I was in my office on Sunday and some of my staff came in to help me out. And I really do appreciate that. Now they right. didn't have to do that, but they did. But it's showing that they care. And, and guess what? When it comes time to get a raise that little thing it goes a very long it goes way. a very long way because they were there on sunday with me till 8 30 making sure everything was done correctly and 
I appreciate that. They right. didn't have and it's, to. It's me- and it's memorable. And it's memorable. And that's the memory that that's, that little extra something says. You know what? These people, I'm part of my core. Correct. And I agree they, with that. And I, and and for the people who don't do that, who are out drinking rosé on a Sunday, then when it comes time for because them, because they're to entitled ask, to it, and they are, and they are. But then when it comes from a business standpoint, don't come knocking on my door asking me for a raise. So you're better than the other yeah. people. Agreed. There should be like a ding. I feel like we should have had a There's ding a little... for all the sayings. Because <laughs> I have another Lobans. saying. I have Lobans. another saying. Um, this one is, oh my gosh, I really should write a book. Or it should be stealing from everybody. So who cares? <laughs> but the, the saying By is- By 2025, you'll have a book. By 25? Two years? Five. Oh, 2025? 20, Within the next five years. What the hell am I going to say in a book? Here's how to turn failure into success. I don't know if that's true. We'll see. Some beautiful pictures of flowers, at least. At the I want to write a book called The Memoirs of the Entitled. Ah, I think that would be a great book. A good, one. good stories. <laughs> uh, um, the saying is very simple. If you want to be a great employee and you want to be a great teammate and you want to be awesome, take 20% of the crap that your boss doesn't want to deal with and mm. do it for them. 20%. Even if it's something small, like I need to go get my coffee. You don't have to be an intern to go get coffee. I want to go get coffee. I haven't had time to go get coffee because I'm on a phone. I'm on a conference call, blah, blah, blah. Or ordering lunch and thinking about your employee, my employee, mm. or employer. Employer. Say, employer. Employer. And say that, hey, yeah. by the way, I know that you're supposed to be the one to say to me, hey, I'm ordering lunch. Should I get you something? But in return, I'm ordering lunch. Can I get you something? And that, I know those you are the moments. To go. And those are the moments that that's, when things that come down. That trickles down to of care. Course. That's to me is yep. everything. And it, yes, it's silly. But at the end of the day, that's it. Yep. That and, is what matters to me. And a cohesive team. Like we had an event, you know, I, I found something out of my office. Someone planned a, a separate Christmas party that Ooh. I wasn't invited to. Now, I don't p- particularly care that I wasn't invited. Because really? I'm the boss and yeah, whatever. I know. I, I hate that. But whatever. But they didn't invite my assistant, Julia, either. Oh, yeah. Ah, we're Why? small business. Because you're the what's it called? Because she's, she's the, you. the golden snitch. I don't Correct. know. I don't um, go, Julia. Go, Julia. So anyway, the next day I come in and I'm like, hey, you guys planned this party. And we don't do that here. And right. the girl who did it was like, what? Like, right. we, we don't exclude anybody. our peers. Yeah. You don't want to include me. I Fine. get it. I'm the boss. I'm no fun. I wouldn't have come anyway, P.S. But you didn't include Julia. She's like, well, it's not mandatory. I'm like, no, no, you're missing the point. You I don't surround her. myself with people who make other people feel like shit. Right. And she looked at me and I was like, so let me make this easy for you. You're fired. Robot. And she was like, whoa. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? What you did was worse than stealing for me, in my opinion. Get out. And that was it. And it set, you know, I think it also changed the, the, the a year ago, changed the trajectory. It, it changed the, it like, changes my everything. office chemistry because then they said, oh seriously. shit. There's a team, there's, there's a, a family. Team. We yeah. all, everyone's feelings matter. Put yourself, uh, and put everyone else's feelings above Before your own. Before yours, yep. Right? We, we, all, we all work hard on the weekends. We all work hard on the office. At the end of the day, we all eat that. And we're all part of that. So we all deserve to be treated well. That's I agree with that. With I'm that. like, I think 1000% someone else's issues are my issues too. And I need to go ahead and be there for my team. Mm. So my team is dealing with something that like goes the wrong way. Like I'm the first sure. one to jump on it. If I have to fire a client because they're, I, I mean, we did that recently. A client came in, was not so happy with their sample, mm. even though it was pretty much exact to their, to their, what to call that? I, I did, <laughs> I did like the experience because it taught me something, mm. but I was upset at the fact that we waited a year and a half to hear it. Mm. Like we went through it many times with them. It was a year and a half process. Um, it was very specific. It never happened to us before where a client looked at their proposal and where it says that your proposal is an exaggeration or an example or a direction in which we're going to take the party, but it's not literal. Sure. We designed it. Can't be literal. I mean, close to literal, but it was, it was inspired, which is sure. the word we use a lot, inspired by the proposal. But what you do, I feel like, in, in, to support you in this is, you can't do literal in a lot of ways. It's no, you can never do literal because inspiration of what, is, of what yeah. it's going to be, which was great. And we ended up doing an inspiration and a, a piece that looked inspired by the proposal. They said, well, we never even liked the proposal. I'm like, then why'd you sign it? Why'd you sign the proposal? Sure. And they're like, well, because we thought it was just inspiration. You were going to show us something completely different. I'm like, completely different is not the same as inspired by. Sure. So in that situation, I wouldn't have cared. Like I bent over backwards. I met them three more times. Their wedding was very soon. I went ahead and I, I took it off of my teammates' shoulders because I realized that they were going to need it. But here's the worst part. They came and abused the hell mm. out of my team, yelled at them, called them names, told them that they were in, incapable. And like, like under, underwhelmed was a word that was used, but not in a capacity of like the flowers are underwhelming. It was the experience. And I'm like, these guys have babysat your emotions, never mm. denied you of a meeting, sure. never denied you of a sample, never denied you of a phone call, never denied you of an email, never denied you of redesigning your party 12 times, which by the way, we've done for many people. Mm. If you have to do it, you have to do it. It's service. 
But don't come in here and treat my employees like garbage and expect us then to turn around and say, we're going to be the happiest people the day of your wedding. Of course. It's at the end of the day, it's just money. We love what we do. I'm not going to sacrifice the love and passion for what we do for the sake of being treated like garbage because you're paying us. Of course. Especially when you can't imagine anything clearly and you're not reading your proposal anyway. <laughs> how am I going to make you happy the day of your wedding? Yeah, but it gets back into like we had a client, you know, a similar situation and they spoke to uh, one of my uh, team members, Sylvia, really bad. And I called them up. I'm like, hey, listen, let's set some fucking boundaries here. Yeah, you cannot you, speak to You do like not them. speak to my team like that. We've had that also before. And they were like, excuse me. I'm like, we do not allow that here. And the client was like, well, I'm the client. I'm like, yes. And we're human beings as well. Yeah, that's and always been be like reminded. We need to be that. treated that way. That being said, Sylvia will never speak to you again. Yeah, you're going to be dealing I, with me now. You're going to deal with me now. I've gone through that. And yeah. I will not allow you to speak to me like that. Yeah. Here's your book. You can approve it. And when you do, I'll personally have it FedExed to your house. Other than that, please don't contact us. Respect. Like You cross the line. You can, know I, can I circle back for a second? I just want to say the bride and groom of that situation were amazing people. We love them. It wasn't them. It was the parents. Mm. But we love the branding. They ended up having a beautiful wedding day. We ended up sending all our inspiration to another florist. We told them to use somebody else that they maybe felt more comfortable with that they've used in the past. We ended up forwarding the inspiration. But the bride and groom, if they're listening to this, they should know that they, they I mean, I told us them, they were amazing and we were on the same page. But well, that's part of it. It gets back it. to what we do. And listen, yeah. we don't deal with just one one person. No, we deal it's with a, a committee. Team of committees, it's a committee. Planners, families. So, what, uh, what do we have on the horizon for Birch right now? Oh my gosh, we have some really fun events coming up in August. August is going to be insane. I'm excited for what my August feed is going to look like mm. because it's very floral driven. It's not as uh, element like, which sure. is more birch, I would say, but it's very floral driven, which I'm excited about. Um, I think just continued growth, and you're going to see a lot more of my face and the teammates' face on Instagram and social media, you know, alike. And we're going to keep doing us. Unapologetically about, us. I know we've evolved past doing some florals with uh, some restaurant, a restaurant tour oh my recently. Gosh, yeah, so. That's crazy. Yeah, let's get into that for a second. Oh my gosh, yeah. a millisecond. So I was dragged into this, dragged in. I was asked by one of my, by one of my customers I bumped into over a weekend, says, hey, I'm building this restaurant. Can you help me? And I was like... Yes, again. Customer, well, let's preface this. So customer, customer from a floral Birch. business. Yeah, customer So the Birch. evolution of taking your core business. Yes, and, and exta- expanding it, it. yeah. Yep. So I bumped into him over a weekend. He goes, I need you. I said, why? He's like, you do experiences? I need an experience in my restaurant. I was like, I don't know restaurants, but if you're willing to have me, I'm willing to be there. Sure. It's kind of, you know, my, my, my claim to fame. So I walked into the restaurant, did not necessarily love the way, direction in which it was being designed. I completely redesigned it with the interior designer um, and with the team there who's amazing and... It's open now and really exciting. Wall Street Grill, if anyone wants nice, to go. Nice, nice. It's down on uh, Pearl Street. Yep. Um, it's unbelievable. Food is unbelievable. Chef's unbelievable. Experience is great. Like, we're working on it every day. It's new. It's only, like, four months old. Yeah, but, I, I mean, the message there is simply, like, do all it. that hard work, though. Just I mean, And, it. again, what if you said no? Again, another if opportunity. If I would have said no, then I would have a lot less stake in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> the but, reality but no, is it but, opened the door for me. Yeah. I've never experienced And now think about interior. the next, like, I'm going to, you know, you're not, right, we're not interior. I'm not a. No, definitely but, not. At the end of the day, fast forward a year from now, another restaurant opens and up. Yeah, and they say, hey, I, I went to Royal Street Grill and the fucking place is beautiful. Right. Can you come in and consult with me? Yeah, that's And there's something. other avenues past what I feel like. Lateral growth. We, and we get stuck in this, I can only do weddings or I can only do modern Orthodox or I can only do Orthodox right. or, or Hasidic. Like, you know, yeah. we pigeonhole ourselves to and our we leave so much money on the table Correct. in doing other projects. Yeah. Well, I think one is time. The question is if your side element is going to now take away from your main, that's something to consider when making these mm. decisions. However, that being said, but if your side I, hustle I, can contribute back into yeah, your main, then you're like great because now we're sure. we're connected to this restaurant. I mean, how many people are you meeting through Wall Street Grill? A lot now of people that you wouldn't have had access to, and also working with these people, and also having a better connection to my to my previous client. Yep. Like now we're even closer, and like he wouldn't go to somebody else, and sure. the partners that are involved there, and the team that's involved in it, everyone's referring Birch because of it. So like. There's so many ways to capture an audience. There's so many ways to get involved. There's so many ways to be a part of something that could be slightly bigger or different for you. I say just say, okay. Uh, and, and I want to just reiterate that with saying, put the fucking work in too, because it is yeah. a massive undertaking. It's Always. a massive time. Oh my commitment. gosh, yes. And anytime you say yes to a project. You need to be all in. You need to be all in. All in. And yeah, it, I'm not just saying say okay to everything. It's just like, yeah. like, okay, I'm attached to it. Yep. It's a big thing for Birch, by the way. It's a huge thing because we get approached by charities, non-for-profits all the time. Can you do our events? Even industry events. Can you do our events? And we, at the beginning, obviously we jumped into all, all the, all the opportunities, but then we realized how much money it was costing us 
and we're like, can we afford to keep this up? And is this really going to build our business? Mm. So over time, we've come up with this strategy on how to prom promote ourselves within these within these non for profits and these you know events that we're not really getting paid for, cover our cost, and still be able to be a part yes. of the event. But here's the big thing, and I say this to everyone: if you're not going to give me at least a budget, even at cost, to be epic. I can't do it mm. because I'm not just willing to put my name on it to put my name on it. I want to put my name on it for the sake of it being great. Otherwise, I'd rather be a guest yep. and hang out with everybody and have the greatest time. You know, that's that's kind of my jam. Go big or go home. I never settle. Because and, and, why settle? And as you're saying that, I'm thinking about you now need to be conscious of keeping all the events you do on brand. Everything needs to because be on brand. every yeah. single event you touch now, especially given how prominent your brand is on social, is a reflection of that. Always, yeah. And I, it does not mean that, – that doesn't mean expensive. I just want to make, clarify that. It can be a regular beautiful wedding, but it needs to be edited birch. It can't just be, okay, you came in, you followed a, an Instagram account that showed you hydrangeas and roses done in a bowl on a glass vase. I'm not against hydrangeas and roses done on a glass vase. I'm not. I mean, a little, but not like a lot. To the point that I will take it and I'll develop it into something else. But it has he to be will. an evolution of that. It, it has to be an evolution that. of it. It's never a literal, a ne never a literal yep. translation of it. Which I think is what's great about us is that we're really chameleon-like. The event always has to be you. It's not about it being birch, but it does have to be edited birch, which mm. I think is the part of the game that we that we change a little bit. And I think some people take on jobs sometimes and they don't realize that a job can specifically hinder oh my or gosh. hold back your – because it's not you. on point with your Correct. brand. You know, like, you. I remember we took on a client recently and I was like, whoa, they're so off my brand. And I said to them, I'm like, look, I don't think we can deliver what you want at the highest level that you need. Right? You have to be very and conscious you have to of be that. conscious of I've that. done the same thing where I've lost clients because of parties where I've had to go back and say to them – no, no, no. That's not what it's like. Yeah. But also on the flip side, by the way, when we do these luxurious events, some people find us to be unapproachable. Do you uh, ever get those phone calls? Yes. I get they, those. Other people say to us, like we can't only. call you yep. because we're afraid of how expensive you're going to be. Well, Correct. no. That was their budget. Like, give sure. me your budget and I'll tell you up front. What if, we can do. If, if we can do it. Sure. If we can't do that. We're, we, we welcome everybody. Just yep. be real. Be honest. And we'll go for it. I mean, I've planned parties. I don't even want to talk about it. But like, I designed an event once crazy over the top party client called me up it's next week blah blah I jumped in no deposit no nothing designed it started producing it because i was so afraid it was a weekend and it was the party was on tuesday morning and we got the final okay on friday morning but there was no there was no deposit lesson learned by the way i went ahead and started producing friday morning because i said i can't afford to wait to order the stuff till monday i won't get it till tuesday and the sure. party's tuesday morning what am i going to do so i ordered everything friday so i'd have it monday I'm talking about crazy amounts of stuff. I went to town on everything. My production team worked over the weekend. Everything worked out well. Everything started getting produced. Monday calls. Where's the money? Where's the deposit? Where's mm. the, you know you got to pay in full? We're loading in tomorrow. Called the venue. Venue's like we don't even have this party. What are you talking about? Ooh. And I'm like, mm, okay. Called the photographer. We don't have this party. I don't know what you're talking about. Called DJ. No idea. I'm like call back the lady. She goes. I just wanted to feel like it was what it was like to to plan a, a, an event with you. I, I I'm really sorry. Ooh. Meanwhile, we're in a huge lawsuit right now because I have all this stuff, like emails, everything proving the fact that we have an event. Ooh. It's a lesson learned. Always take a deposit before you order anything. Yeah, Doesn't matter how late it is. Yeah, or, just yeah. say, or just say, it's not for me. It's too close to the time. Yeah. Whatever it may be, don't deal with crazies. <laughs> so, I mean, I think we're an hour and a half. In oh, my God. Josh. I'm sorry, everybody. No, my apologies. I want to be, be respectful of your time because Thank I know you, so much. you are nonstop. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll be in a car talking. Like some, 28 seconds. Two, two, yeah. so, so, no, I'm going uh, to work first. For so, but before we wrap up, I have one, one, two final questions sure. for you. Uh, the first one is um, being a father of four. Yes. Right? Uh, what's the example you're currently trying to set for your children? I think I'm trying to take what my father taught me and just influencing them in the same way in a generation where the work ethic, I think, has slightly shifted just because there's so much more in technology mm -hmm. that there's not as much hands-on anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to teach my kids mostly, really mostly, to really be the best version of them mm -hmm. and that the same thing that goes back to the employee conversation, same thing goes back to everything we were talking about, the care, and put themselves 100% into everything yep. they do. Don't just yes people. Don't pretend like you could do something you can't do. If you can't do it, don't be embarrassed. Say, mm -hmm. Dad, I need help. Yep. Mom, I need help. Teach me how to do it. Next time, maybe I won't need help. And if you need help the next time, we'll help you again mm -hmm. until you can do it on your own. Let us be the crutches for the rest of your life, meaning not be the crutches for the rest of your life. Let us be the crutches now to for protect you, to allow you to walk properly for the rest of your life. Yes. So I think for them, that's the biggest lesson I'm trying to teach. It's just 
be them and don't be embarrassed to be them. For a long time as a, in high school and elementary school, I wasn't like, people were like, oh my gosh, you must've been so creative. You must've been so popular speaking. I was not popular. I was not creative. I was an average student who made my way with my five closest friends and that was it. I wasn't, I didn't go to games. I wasn't social. I was very basic on a very basic level, but I always did whatever I did a hundred percent. And I tried teaching that to my kids today. Mm. And the, the final question for you is, dun, 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 dun. if you could give yourself one piece of advice from 10 years ago, that yeah. would be drastically impactful to your life today. What would that be? Wow. That's a serious question, man. It's fucking deep. Oh my God. Wow. That was like, not what I was expecting. to be like, if you had to give yourself advice for 10 years from now, 10 years ago, advice. Ooh. I have to say it would probably be be smarter about the way you build your company. Meaning this is very specific. So it's specifically regarding money because I didn't have any. Mm. And I borrowed from Pete to give to Paul to give to Pete to give sure. to Paul until I was able to finally get out of the circle. But if anyone knows that circle, there's a lot of commission built in. There's a lot of loss in there. And you hurt a lot of people as you go. Sure. And I think that was my biggest regret always is the fact to build myself. I had to run down, down those channels because I didn't have a choice sure. just but to make it. And I think because of that, my wife suffered, my kids suffered, I suffered, my company suffered for a long time because I was always busy paying back mm. the Pauls and Pete's, even though they were very generous and very nice to me. But until I was able to get out of that circle, it was just, it was long. So I don't know if I could have done it a different way, but I think the biggest piece of advice, and here is what it is, don't jump. I think I reacted too quickly. Mm. I think I should have thought it through slightly more. I could have taken an extra day or two, regardless of the pressure that I was up against, and say, this is a smarter way of doing it. Of you will be more successful this way. You will breathe easier this way, negotiate better this way, act different this way. Sure. I think that's what my advice would be is when you're going into business, as I was, think long term, don't react to the situation you're in right now. Mm. Like you were up against the wall when you were getting kicked out of your, what's it called? Yep. Or your, your, your space. And when you had to move to Long Island, I was up against the wall day in and day out to make payroll. Yep. And I just reacted every no, single time. Yeah. And it was not necessarily the smartest thing. And, you know, my family heard from it. Everyone heard from it at the time. And I don't think it was fair. Mm. And I think I would just give myself the advice to think more and see how it would have caused an effect. That Sorry if that was like a mellow, like really dramatic ending. No, it was a great, great ending. Honest. So I, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this with My me. My absolute Jess. pleasure. It was, it was so amazing. Um, I want to commend you for the work you do. You thank guys, you. You guys fucking kill it. And I you think try. the uh, sky is the limit, number one. Um, but I also want to thank you because I think a lot of people um, sometimes come on and we have these discussions and they don't necessarily open up about the, oh, yeah. the, the 80% of that, you know, it's the, yeah. they, they, or, you know, people want to have that guarded 20% image up where everything's perfect. Yeah. And, and I appreciate the fact that you were candid and you talked about, Hey, of like, course. It, it, it wasn't always this, no. it's this now. Yeah. Um, but I think it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of confidence and it takes a lot of putting your ego aside to talk about, you know, Hey, listen, you. it wasn't always this. So I want to commend you for that Thanks. because I think there's a lot of beauty and strength in that story for people listening that are in the event industry, um, that are in any industry. I don't think you just need to be in the event industry. Um, but there, there are specific industry people sometimes they just don't realize what goes yeah. into this um so i want to thank you for sharing that and i think it's powerful it's a great story thank you um i look forward to uh what is ahead oh wow and, me and, too I, and i hope you remember people like us when, oh, you, have, when you have your tv and your book deal <laughs> we will remember you Anthony, but if you space. if you kindly would so yeah. a couple things one is i know you are big about helping young people Very which much I, so. I want to promote right now so sure. if someone is young 21 years old just graduated college they want to intern with with Birch. Yeah. What's the best way for them to approach you to do that? I think send an email or your resume or a DM on Instagram, but mean it. Mm. That's the most important thing. We get these DMs and, and, and emails every day, and most people don't follow through. Yeah. So if you're going to be driven to do it, and again, now that you heard this, if you listen to this entire podcast, which you should because I think it is very eye-opening, and I don't think I've ever been this candid about it, so I appreciate, first of all, the platform to be. Um, but just as much so, be serious about it. If you're serious about it, don't stop until you get it. You heard that. That's my advice. That's like, it. just keep DMing me. Keep DMing us. It's not saying, a secret. I want it. I want it's it. Not I a want secret. it. No. Keep but doing it. Because if you're doing it, then it means that you want it enough. Exactly. If you want it enough, that means you're going to work hard enough. Yep. If you work hard enough, that means you're going to be something. That to me is everything. That's my advice. So email us at info at birchevents.com. Go on, you know, Birch, at Birch Event Design and DM us. That's the way I see it immediately. Josh drinks his coffee with uh, half and half and two sugars. No, yeah. No sugar. Whole milk. 
no fat, no nothing. This is my diet for life is coffee. Not kidding. And like six shots of espresso. And, and, and I'm sure everyone, if they want to hire you, uh, planners want to reach out to you, you're very easy to get a hold very of. Very easy. I'm, you know, I learned that from Sydney Novotny. Always answer your phones. Yep. I always answer the phone. I think it's super important. I speak to people all the time. They're like, oh, wait, it's you. I'm like, yep. it's me. So easy um, to get a hold of, but they very get much to, so. uh, Birch events on... On Instagram, yeah. on bircheventdesign.com. Cool. You know, we're right. available. We're well, out you there. heard it here, man. Thank you so much for doing Thank this with you. me. Thank you. This is awesome. You're, you're amazing. I Thank look you. forward to many more together. Yes, and, sir. Uh, Can't we'll wait. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.